All right, guys, welcome to class today. We're talking about the third dimension, finally, since we're in 2D and 3D geometry. And we're going to talk about volume today. And volume, if you know what that is, is this, the amount of stuff a particular container could possibly hold. It is three-dimensional space. So you're talking about air, you're talking about liquid, you're talking about popcorn or something like that. Okay, so we're going to talk about prisms. And a prism is composed of a whole bunch of polygons. So that's what the difference between a prism and let's say a cylinder would be. So a prism is gonna look, there's my prism, there we go, something like this. And this is a rectangular prism. Why is it called a rectangular prism? Well, because it is named for its base. And it's important to know what the base is. The base is basically just the bottom part or the top part. And, it, and yes, you're right, in a rectangular prism, it does not really matter which side is the base. So volume for any prism, and this is a very generic formula, very generic formula is volume is equal to big B times H. Big B times H, and big B, if you notice here, is the area of the base, the area of the base. What does that mean? Well, that means the two-dimensional space on any particular rectangle or triangle or pentagon or whatever it may be that is representing the base. So take the area, two-dimensional space, and multiply it by how high, how tall your particular prism is, and you will find the volume in three-dimensional units. So let's go ahead. If I have a five-inch uh, length on my rectangular prism, and a three inch width of the base. And I have a box that is 10 inches tall. This rectangular prism is 10 inches tall. Okay, well, let's check this out. Let's find the volume. Volume is equal to big B times H. Well, what is the shape of big B? What is the base? Well, it's a rectangle. So I'm going to plug in the, the formula for a rectangle. Its area is length times width. And I'm going to multiply that times the height. So the length is five inches, the width is three inches, and the height is 10 inches, okay? So you're asking, okay, Mr. Cummings, don't we just actually multiply all three of these numbers together? That's what we learned last year, just go length times width times height. And you're absolutely correct, you do. And that's because of the associative property, the, par the parentheses do not matter, and the order does not matter either. Yes, you are basically multiplying these numbers together. So let's do a little uh, mental arithmetic here. Uh, I'm just going to go 5 times 3 is 15 times 10 is 150. And now let's think, what is inches times inches times inches? Inches times inches times inches. Well, each of these is to the first power, and if you remember from the monomial units, then we're going to add those particular exponents together, and it becomes inches to the third power. So hopefully maybe some of those algebraic rules kind of make a little more sense. And what is inches to the third power? Well, we say that is cubic inches. Cubic inches. Well, what the heck's a cubic inch? Well, it's a little cube. This is a terrible cube. I just drew. That is a one by one by one inch little cube. And how many of those are going to fit inside of this box? Well, there's going to be 150 of them that fit in the inside of that particular box. How much stuff fits in the box? 150 cubic inches of stuff. Okay, let's practice this one. What about uh, the volume of this particular prism? Now, is this a rectangular prism? Well, it has rectangles on it. The bottom looks like it would be a rectangle. Okay, but actually, this is a triangular prism. And how do we call it a triangular prism? Well, the two congruent sides on the edges are not rectangles. The two congruent sides are triangles. So we call this a triangular prism. Triangular prism. And its volume is found by still going volume is equal to big B times H. And what did big B stand for? Big B stood for the area of the base. Area of the base. Okay, well, what's the base shape on this particular object? Well, this base shape is a triangle. So we have to plug in the formula for a triangle for big B. One half base times height times the height of your particular prism. So we go volume 
is equal to, in parentheses, one half of the base of the triangle. Well, actually, since this is a right triangle, and I can tell that by that particular little um, right angle right there, it doesn't really matter which one I call the base, which one I call the height, so I'm just going to choose 5 as the base, the 5-inch side, and the 6-inch side as being the height, and I'm going to multiply that times the 15 inches of height on the prism. So, okay, let's see what we can do here mentally. Half of 6 is 3 times 5 is 15. Again, times another 15, and I think we know 15 squared is 225. And yes, this is going to be inches times inches times inches, which is once again inches in the third dimension or cubic inches, 225 cubic inches. All right, no problem there. Let's move on. Okay, now volume of a pyramid. What the heck is a pyramid? Well, a pyramid is just like a prism, except for it doesn't have two bases, two congruent sides. It has actually only one base. So let's actually check this out. We've got this little pyramid, just like the pyramids in Egypt, that they are rectangular pyramids. And why is it called a rectangular pyramid? Well, because the bottom is a rectangle. The bottom is a rectangle. Okay, and well, what is the formula for a rectangular pyramid? Well, the formula for any pyramid is one-third big B times H. One-third, and I don't like the way that this fraction is drawn. It's going on with my pen. One-third big B times H. One-third. Okay, why one-third? Well, if you think about a rectangular prism versus a rectangular pyramid, it would take three of these rectangular pyramids to make a rectangular prism. It would take three of them. Um, so what do we have to do to the volume formula? Well, we're going to cut it in three or multiply by the fraction one-third. Volume of any pyramid. So it's basically the same exact formula as the last thing, except we are multiplying by a third. Right? And I'm not sure exactly what's going on here with this. But that's where we're going to cut it off for now. So hopefully that gives you some insight into how to find the volume of some prisms and some pyramids.